Hello everyone and welcome once again to Thursdev. My name is Luke, and today I'd like to take a quick look at the anatomy of a video game mechanic. Although this is most useful to those interested in pursuing game design, since it's the designer on the hook to define most of these components, I find that a thorough understanding of all the granular components of a mechanic is extremely useful for anyone in a game development role in helping to understand what goes into a mechanic or feature, where bottlenecks might arise, and how the mechanic's development flows. So what, before all else, is a game mechanic or feature? The simple version is that a mechanic is a completely realized thing that a player can do in a game. Game mechanics can be anything as simple as the ability to jump to something as complex as a crafting system. Even more broadly, the mechanics are the individual parts of a game that make it a game, as opposed to a simple piece of art. As you can probably imagine, the process of fully realizing a game mechanic is often a long and complicated one, and studios can, at times, spend multiple months at a time implementing a single core mechanic of a game. So how does that process work? The mechanic begins, of course, as a design. Like creating a house or a vehicle, you have to, or at least should, start with a blueprint that will detail for everyone that's to work on it exactly what its specifications are. By predefining the tasks that everyone will do and the minutiae of those tasks, the team can efficiently build the mechanic while hopefully being able to anticipate any potential difficulties. Unsurprisingly, this task is done by a designer. The more experienced the designer, of course, the more likely they will be to fully understand and be able to pre-design the more complicated internal components, and the better an understanding they have of programming and art concepts, the more effective their designs will be. A design can include detailed algorithms, UI wireframes, which are diagrams detailing the method the player interacts with the mechanic, and a detailed description in text of how the feature is expected to function. Surprisingly, some studios choose to ignore this step for a more organic style of designing, which is frequently ad hoc and seat of the pants, but that can be messy and frequently is a source of technical debt, which I spoke about in last week's episode. Design can, however, be a massive production bottleneck, as the implementation team often can't even begin to estimate the scope of their work until the design is ready. Once the design does leave the hands of the designer, the top level of implementation tasks can begin. The UI designer frequently takes over from here, teamed with an artist who are specialists in 2D art and frequently UX, or user experience, who will take the wireframes and begin creating the mocks of the UI. These mocks will be the base upon which the final art assets for the UI are created. Simultaneously, a gameplay programmer can typically start at this point on building the individual functions that will be called by this mechanic, and lay the groundwork for any action that will occur on the side of the game client, or the part of the game that's installed locally on the player's computer, or phone, or game console, or whatever. If the mechanic also requires an animating character, for example, the 3D pipeline would also have to be utilized. At its simplest, an animator might be needed to create custom animations, which the gameplay programmer would then call in their code, or it could be as involved as a complete character, modeled, retopoed, UV'd, textures, rigged, and then animated. I'll go over the 3D art pipeline in a later episode, perhaps with Matt's assistance, but let's get back to the mechanic before we stray for too long. The individual components, art and functional assets, are generally all able to be done in tandem, as well as the beginnings of the UI programming, which takes the art created by the UI designer and artist and implements them in-game. For those of you in QA and project management, it's useful to know here that more frequently than not, at this point any issues with the visual aspects of the UI, short of an asset being obviously wrong, is more likely an issue in UI coding than art, a commonly made misunderstanding. I digress. They'll take the buttons, text, and assets and code how they'll display on screen, as well as program their functionality, hooking together with the gameplay programmer's created functions. Depending on the game, it should be noted around this point, the backend or network programmers will be getting involved if the game has a network component. Most likely, the actual game server, in the event of its existence, is a separate entity from the gameplay mechanics, but houses all of the important variables that the game will track tuning values, important data that the client needs to function correctly. In some cases, the client reads only what exists within its own walls, in which case this is eschewed, but where applicable, this would be where the network component is created, to link gameplay to the server and back. 
Once we have our UI, gameplay, and network programming done, as well as any animation necessary, we begin a pass at integrating all of the above. While integration is being done, the designer will return to the scene to do any necessary scripting. This can fall to the experienced designer if the disciplines are separated. Scripting, unlike programming, seeks to take the existing program mechanics and define necessary values that the game can then interpret. Usually a mechanic will be called in many different circumstances. It falls upon the scripter, which is frequently a designer, to define when those mechanics are called and what variables and script are executed to make the most out of the mechanic as implemented. After all of the components are in, integrated, and testable, and the script has been defined, the mechanic will be placed in the hands of QA, who will refer to the design created way back at the beginning of the process to verify that the mechanic is functioning correctly and to inform the members of the team if anything is out of place. Only after a mechanic is verified can it really, truly be considered finished and ready to ship. A game mechanic ultimately has a lot of moving parts, and there are a lot of people involved in the process. We tend to think of those as belonging to just their larger disciplinary groups, artist, programmer, designer, but the skill sets involved are wide ranging and varied. There are cases of small studios where you have a few jacks of all trades doing everything, but ultimately, in general, though it presents a unified face to the player, the humble game mechanic is the result of a lot of people's effort, and to that end has many possible points of failure. As you can see, the process of creating a game mechanic or feature is a tangled web of interdependency. Here and there you'll notice a number of lines coalescing in one place and then opening up again. These are known as production bottlenecks, tasks that have to be completed before the large groups of others can be accomplished. It's the task of the project manager or producer at this juncture to ensure that those bottlenecks are taken into consideration and work is being done ahead of time to have things ready for the next step when reaching a bottleneck. Anyway, that's it for today's more in-depth look at the anatomy of the game mechanic. I know that it's a fairly convoluted diagram up above, and in no way is it a perfect representation of what you would see, or even does it really encompass all of the disciplines that are actually involved. There are even more roles that are involved in the process, but I wanted to distill this down at least a bit for the sake of palatability. I hope that you found this lesson entertaining and educational, or at least one of the above. I may soon delve even further into the individual discipline groups to look at the separate roles in each, but for now, let's call today's lesson done. Thank you for joining me today. If you'd like to be a member of this small but growing community of video game enthusiasts that love both the playing and making of games, you're welcome to subscribe and also join us on our website, levelzeronpcs.com, where we'll be providing even more content and just make it generally easier to browse our stuff. Once again, I thank you for joining me, have a great day, and I hope that I'll see you here again soon. Take care.